Fire Emblem Three Houses is one of my favorite games of all time. I freaking love the tactical combat system. The story is, well, it can be kind of weird in some places, I'll be honest, but the characters are all great and very memorable, and choosing to set the entire game within the Officer's Academy of Garrick Mock Monastery was super fun and made for a really memorable setting. Now, according to the game's lore, the Officer's Academy is a super prestigious institution for learning that only admits 24 students per class from the entire continent. If you want to get in here, you got to be the best of the best, a once in a generation prodigy in history, magic, battle tactics, I don't know, math probably, it's not super clear what they actually teach here. And sure, some of the students like Annette or Lysithia certainly fit that bill. Then there's people like Lawrence who, well he's kind of an idiot, but he also has a very rich and politically influential father. So. You know, I'm totally sure that curling sponsorship he got is completely legitimate. And then there's students like Raphael, who, who, well, let's be honest, he's not smart, he's not rich. I got no freaking clue how he got it, except maybe he's got some serious dirt on Archbishop Rhea. Is, is he even smart enough to know how to blackmail someone, though? Oh, that was tasty. But that's not what I'm interested in today. You see, the end of the Garrick Mock school year is drawing near, and I've been given the unenviable task of selecting this year's valedictorian. There are some truly exceptional students in this class, and others... Well, I mean, the competition wasn't that steep. But in order to remain as unbiased as possible, I'm doing what I do best, creating an overly convoluted scoring system to be able to objectively rank every single student in the game and figure out exactly what their GPA is. Richard, hit that intro. Now, when I say GPA, I don't mean your classic grade point average. Not only because there's no way for me to know exactly what grade every student has gotten in all their classes to be able to calculate it, but also GPA is objectively dumb and I wouldn't use it anyway. Like the fact that the difference between an 88 and an 89 in terms of your GPA is pretty much completely negligible, yet the difference between an 89 and a 90, which is still just a one point difference, is massive, makes no sense. It's a completely arbitrary threshold chosen just because we like things at base 10. You are literally altering the course of students' lives based on a comma that they missed in that one essay, you absolute mon- Instead, I devise a revolutionary new way to calculate GPA. So, I'm proud to announce that this year's class rankings were determined by the Gehrig Mach Propag- I mean, uh, a preeminence award. That's a synonym for something good, right? This score is calculated using seven different factors. Each student was scored on each factor on a scale from one to 10, and those scores were then converted into their final GPA. The first factor is intelligence, obviously. Now, unfortunately, there is no intelligence stat in the game itself to be able to objectively figure out how smart a character is. I contemplated using the magic stat to represent this, since a lot of other RPGs use an intelligence or similar stat to represent magical power. But then I checked and saw that Lorenz had one of the highest magic stats in the game, and as we've already established, that guy's dumb as hell. Instead, I chose to make this one more vibe based, or basically the degree to which they won't shut up about books throughout the game. There is one other caveat I want to add here though, for students like Sylvain, who managed to trick a series of girls throughout the year into doing all his homework for him and wound up with one of the best grades in the class. Sure, he couldn't solve for X to save his life, but uh, you can't argue with his results. Next up is class presence. When determining an award like this, a teacher's recommendation can go a long way. I assume, I don't, I don't actually know, I am not at all qualified to be making this sort of decision. When I say presence, I mean students that are actively participating in class, adding valuable points to the discussion without totally monopolizing the conversation. 
or doing that thing where they like they ask a question that the teacher was clearly about to answer like the lecture is called sine and cosine functions i just finished talking about sine functions you asking a uh, professor, so what if it was a, a cosine function instead? It's not a helpful segue, it's just annoying. By presence, I also mean, like, are you literally physically present in class? Nobody's seen Hilda for weeks, we're getting worried. Just to be consistent, I'm using the report card comment scale to grade them. An actually personalized comment means that they were a genuinely positive addition to the class. A pleasure to have in class means that the teacher has nothing bad to say about them, but they didn't feel the need to actually write anything out either. And cooperative student means they have no idea who the hell this kid is. When determining a valedictorian, you should really only be considering academics. However, Garrick Mock Monastery is a religiously backed institution that has a history of, uh, morally questionable decisions. Now, I am not saying that Archbishop Rhea would ever use an award like this to improve her own public image and push forward her own secret agenda. I am not saying that. She would, she would never do anything like that. For that reason, I am definitely not taking into consideration the religious beliefs of every student and how well they align with the church. Edelgard's transcript just so happened to fall into the shredder, removing her from consideration. A very unfortunate coincidence, but a coincidence nonetheless. Next up is connections. Look, I don't want noble houses or political alliances to have any bearing here. In the world of academia, it shouldn't matter if you're a noble or a commoner. If you're the smartest student, you're the smartest student. That being said, I have received several strongly worded letters from Count Burglies insisting that his son Caspar be considered, and I keep telling him, I'm sorry sir, but your son is a total dumbass, and then he keeps casually slipping in that he is in control of the entire Imperial Army, and I mean, I don't think he would send someone to kill me if I don't pick Casper. I, I mean, I really don't think he would. I don't, I, I, uh. Let's be honest, rewarding academic achievement is all fine and good, but at the end of the day, what is the only real point of a valedictorian? To give a speech during the graduation ceremony. And after like three hours of sitting in the blazing sun in black robes, that better be a damn good speech, unless we have a riot on our hands. So the next criteria is charisma. Now, again, the game does have a charm stat that I was planning on using here, but then I looked at the actual numbers and, well, things didn't really line up. Like, when I was playing the game for the very first time and was first introduced to the house leaders, I thought, oh, okay, so we've got the boring one, the boring one, and the one who was actually friendly to me. So you can see my surprise when I saw that Edelgard had a charm of 10, the highest in the game, Dimitri had 9, and Claude only had 8. That definitely wasn't gonna fly, so I'm scrapping the stats again. Instead, I tried to imagine what sort of speech they would give at graduation if given the chance, and rated that hypothetical speech on a scale from 1 to 10, both in terms of quality and length. Lawrence is a fine public speaker and all, but the thought of having to listen to a 40 minute speech about him talking about his sacred duty to protect the common folk makes him want to go pick a fight with this guy. Calls himself the Death Knight. Next up is combat strength. Look, is it problematic that a school sends out its students of ages 15 to 19 on a monthly basis to murder bandits and put down small scale rebellions by any means necessary? Yes. That's all I got, it's super bad. No matter how you slice it, using a body count as a metric for determining a valedictorian is completely immoral. It is just a bad idea from the jump. But I gotta keep Caspar on the run and somehow. And sort of branching off from there, this last metric is a pretty straightforward. Are they still alive? Look, Fire Emblem is a game with permadeath, and it's pretty hard to give a speech at graduation if you're dead. And considering the aforementioned monthly fights to the death, that's a pretty likely if. Seeing as this is the final factor, I thought I should 
probably include at least some of the actual stats in the game at this point. So I added together everyone's HP, defense, and resistance to get a survivability score. No matter how much you try to keep someone like Lysithia in the back and away from danger, eventually she's gonna get hit by one of those like, I don't know, helicopter seed things or something, and then she's probably dead. And with those seven criteria laid out, it's time to crunch the numbers and announce the winners. All right, let's see here. First up, let's go with the Salutatorian, number two in the class, and it is, whoa, it's Hilda. All right, uh, kind of surprising. I guess she was just taking full advantage of the, uh, the hybrid learning environment. I don't know, at least her speech will probably be all right. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Number one in the class, the Valedictorian is... Uh, it's Lysithia, all right, way to go. No real surprise there, she is only 15 and still the smartest student we've seen in years. And hey, hey, way to go Golden Deer securing the top two spots. I, uh, what's that? Oh dear. Um, okay, I have just received some uh, some very unfortunate news. My assistant Richard has just informed me that, that, that someone sneezed in the general proximity of Lysithia and uh, and the resulting sound wave was enough to take her out. All right, um, well, in that unfortunate case, it looks like Hilda has taken the number one slot, and uh, uh, Ferdinand is your new salute. What? Oh, the Empire has just declared war on the church? Okay, well, uh, f that's the whole Caspar situation sorted out. Uh, Ferdinand's out, and Annette is in as your new salute. Oh, and, and the kingdom is under siege by the Empire now. None of the kingdom students will be able to make it to the monastery because they've all been conscripted into the into the military. I guess we could we could just zoom in or something. Uh, uh, or you know what? Maybe we just don't have a salutatory. Nobody likes those speeches. Any yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just we'll just stick with Hilda and oh oh what's that? She got caught plagiarizing? Uh, Ignatz has been doing all her homework for the entire year. <sighs> of course he has the sad sap. Uh alright, alright, let's see here. Claude, no, he is openly doesn't believe in the church, so he's out. Marianne, I think if we asked her to give a speech, she would straight up have a heart attack and die. Uh, Raphael is literally the very, he's not even on this list. I don't even think he, uh, I don't think he made it. Um, let's see. Oh. And I'm proud to announce that this year's valedictorian of the Officers Academy year of 1181 is Lawrence Hellman Gloucester. Congratulations. I, uh, I understand you had a speech prepared on the very, very off chance that this happened. All right. Go for it, man. Hey, yo, Death Knight, uh, your mama's uh, fat. I believe it would benefit you to pay more attention to the way you carry yourself in the company of your betters. It is the duty of the nobility to protect the common folk. And, in return, the commoner is expected to show deference and respect. Naturally, I understand that there is a certain tendency toward familiarity because we are classmates. However... Ah, oh, that was tasty. Thank you.